Okay, between the last lesson and this one, you should have inserted the rest of the pistons and mated them up and see your crankshaft and pistons moving. So the next step is to put on a cylinder head. Grab the cylinder head out of your folder and drag it into the SolidWorks window. Let's take a look at our feature manager at this point. Right click at the very top level and go down to the bottom of the menu and select collapse items. Okay, and now let's mate the cylinder head in place. We have to take a look at the face of the cylinders and determine which end of the cylinder head goes where. We need more space on this end, so this is correct. The face with the bigger openings for the valves goes towards the inside, so this will actually get flipped over like this when it goes in. We need the camshaft on the outside. So let's put this in place. There are a couple of ways to put this in place. You could use face-to-face -face mates, edge-to-edge -edge mates. You could line up the cylinders. This would be different in a more realistic model because you'd have draft on the sides for all these castings. But what we can do to mate up really quickly, instead of using three mates, we can get away with just using two. If you select these two edges, mate them together, and then right-click to accept, and then select these two edges. Then the part is fully defined in just two mates, rather than the typical three. Notice it's fully defined. There's no minus in front of it. We're not trying to get the cylinder head to move. So we've just mated that part in place. The next part we want to put on is the camshaft. And let's, again, drag that in from the Windows Explorer window. Alt-drag to put it onto the support. And hit the green check to accept. Now we can use a camshaft retainer. Drag that in. We need four of these all together. So I'm going to control drag, control drag, control drag. If you flip it over, you can alt drag this edge onto the correct hole, and then alt drag the cylindrical face onto the camshaft. Works out nicely when you don't have to use the mate interface, everything goes a little bit faster. Alt-drag this edge. Alt-drag the cylindrical face. Practice alt-dragging, you'll get good at this eventually. And now to put in the bushings for the camshaft. We'll use the split journal bushing. In reality, this part would be split into two. A lot of people would model that as a multi-body. In this case, I just kept it as a simple cylinder because obviously if we're putting the cylinder head on the engine before we put the valves in, we're not following a realistic assembly method if this were a real engine. To get the valves in here, we're going to have to push them through the metal. So let's continue placing these split journal bearings. I'm going to need four total copies. And just alt-dragging these into place. And tab to flip the orientation. To get the camshaft centered properly, I'm going to line up the middles of the cams with the valve holes. So let's find the camshaft in the feature tree. And then we notice that the right plane is right in the middle of one of the cams. So at this point, 
with the right plane of the camshaft showing, we can turn on temporary axes and control select the temporary axis that goes through the nearest valve hole. Mate these together, coincident, use the right mouse button to accept it, it's the fastest way to go, and then turn off the temporary axis display. To set up one of these valves the way it should be, let's pull in the valve part from your Windows Explorer window and mate that directly into place. So Alt, drag, put it in this hole, and that's good. Now let's put in the rocker spring, drag that into the SolidWorks window. In this case, let's put this down into the recess. So I'll use Alt, grab this edge, and drag it into place. Now in this simulation, we're not going to be as realistic as possible. So if you get this mated down to the bottom, let's go back and get rid of that coincident mate. If you use the alt drag and mated bottom of the spring to the bottom of the hole, we're going to remove that. Because with dynamic motion, the springs are not going to flex. So what I need to do now is mate the top of the valve to the inside of this washer on top of the spring. So let's do that. All right. So now if we move one, they're both going to move. SolidWorks, you can't make parts flex with dynamic assembly motion. There are ways to do it using other techniques, just not that one. Okay, now let's bring in the rocker arm, the rocker arm pin, the roller pin, and the roller. We're going to need two copies each of the roller and the roller pin. Let's work on this subassembly off to the side a little bit. In this case, I'm going to make all of the concentrics with the SmartMate. Alt drag onto the face and click the green check. Alt drag onto the hole and click the green check. Alt drag into that hole and click the green check. And Alt drag. Get the screen position correctly. And green check. And then Get the final roller in place, alt drag. Okay, now we have to get these all centered up. This might actually be simpler if we we're working on it in its own window. So select the roller pin or the roller, whatever's at the end, then shift select whatever comes after the rocker spring. Then right click and say form new subassembly here. Again, SolidWorks creates this subassembly as an internal file to the top level assembly. We can save these as external files, but we'll do that later. Right click on that subassembly, or you can just do a left click and open the subassembly in its own window. Here, we're going to fix the rocker arm in space, and everything else we're going to mate up so that the right plane of the assembly acts as our symmetry plane. So the rocker arm pin, right plane, right plane, mate, coincident, that's good. The roller pin, right plane, right plane, that's good. The roller, Right plane, right plane, and that's good. The second roller, right plane, right plane, and the final roller pin, the right plane for both of those, push that right into place. Okay. Now we can press Control-Tab 
to take us back to the engine assembly that we're working on. At the bottom of our tree is this subassembly, which we can pull closer in place here. We still need a pin in order to place it completely. The next part to pull in is the hex bolt underscore AI. Pull that in, and when you do, SolidWorks is going to allow you to select a configuration. In this case, let's choose the quarter 20 by two and a quarter inch configuration and say OK. With the hex bolt in place, use Alt Drag to drag this into the hole that's in front of the valve core hole and use Tab to flip it so that the head is straight up. And this should be set up so that the long side is toward the cam and the short side is down and toward the spring. Now we can alt drag to put this onto the hex bolt. We need to establish a height for this. Let's actually go ahead and just make the hex bolt a part of that subassembly. In order to do that, grab the hex bolt in the tree and drag it so that you get this symbol with the parts, with the arrows between them. And now the hex bolt is part of the subassembly. Open the subassembly in its own window. Collapse the items. You may have to press Control Q to rebuild the model. And let's establish a distance between the bottom of the head and the plane of the rocker arm pin. So expand the rocker arm pin, select the top plane, control select the underside of the head, and let's give this a distance mate of 0.5. And then use the pin to rotate the bolt so that it goes straight down or reasonably close. And then we need to mate, again, the underside of the bolt head to the top face of the cylinder head with a distance of 1.9. Now this is an assembly that's going to need to move as well. So you need to right click on this, go back to the component properties, and make this a flexible subassembly. Now, if you're like me and you've made an incorrect mate, we can go back and fix that. Let's take a look at the mates here. And let's look at this concentric. If you click on that, you get the option to replace mate entities. And I need to remove the face of the cylinder head and replace it with another face on the cylinder head. And then hit the right mouse button to accept. So repairing your mistakes is fairly easy. Since this is a flexible subassembly, we should be able to set it in motion. Let's add some additional mates here. We have it the flat face on the top of the spring and the face of the follower. Accept that as tangent. And then we need to make a cam mate. The cam follower will be this face. And the selections for the cam will be four faces around the camshaft. And accept that. So now we need to test this part of the mechanism. And that works as we expect. We can make the cylinder head transparent. So we can see the action of the valve as we rotate the cam. So 
So that ends this lesson. Between now and your next lesson, go ahead and put in the rest of the cam springs and followers and rocker arms and everything for the rest of the valves on this side of the engine.